everybody, this is Nick with A Plus Building Maintenance once again. My, once again, glad we got dragged back into this. Sorry about that. I don't know if you like it or not, but it's kind of, kind of got forced to. When you pay your checks, you just do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Anyways, today, guys, we got, uh, it's kind of cool. We want to talk to people about, you know, about how to plan a project. We have, get calls all the time with customers that just to get ready to do a bathroom remodel, kitchen remodel, maybe, whatever. And they are, they look at this project as this overwhelming thing, and we always are telling them, relax, hold on, hold on, hold on, you know, you know let's start, you know, uh, about, you know, we go over the different things that we want them to do, and then we'll try to go step by step on how to make these projects a little more manageable, you know. Um, any project is, you know, can be a headache, especially if it's a larger one as far as bathroom or kitchen. But there's some things you can do to help keep these under control. So I actually, I asked Glenn to actually put some things together for us to, uh, you know, he handles most of the calls that are coming in. Normally, if you call us over here at the shop, uh, Glenn's going to be the guy you talk to. But uh, Glenn, what are some of the things that you tell a person? What's the first thing? If I, let's say I'm a customer and I say, Glenn, I have issues, man. I got to do this kitchen, but, you know, my kids killing me and I, I'm working 16 hours and you know with this kitchen's wrecked and my cabinet's is still working I really want to do the contract with the floor oh my god the floor one the dog is killing it but I don't know these countertops are just really bad but the, the same thing my wife keeps telling me about the drawers still not work what do I do man <laughs> obviously the first step when any project you're going to be doing is planning there's a number of things that you can do along these lines to get the ball rolling in the right direction uh, when it comes to planning, you got to actually sit down, do what we do. Um, we do a lot of these larger jobs. We do bathroom remodels, kitchen remodels, whole home make readies. The biggest thing is having a plan so you can execute properly. There's a number of different things that you can do with that, uh, with the planning. If you guys want to start with a bathroom, uh, don't just walk in and look at this big overall project. Look at it individually. Uh, that's going to make things uh, a little less uh, overwhelming as you go to go ahead and take over these projects. We're going to focus on if you're calling and you want to take care of your bathroom, here's the steps that we would take in doing so. When walking into a bathroom, I know my home, um, A Plus actually did a lot of work on my home and uh, Lord knows we needed it. Uh, my bathroom was the classic, you walked in, I had the blue toilet, I had the blue tub, I had the, uh, the 60s model blue sink. That's cool. Um, and it was really cut up the way it was done. When you walked in, it could be overwhelming. Um, I know when I brought my wife to it, she thought I was... Uh, uh, an idiot for wanting to purchase a home to begin with. But with any project, the, the limit of uh, what can be done is your scope of imagination. And we also want to make sure when, when you're walking in, I tell people don't just think about it. Actually get a clipboard. Um, walk, yeah, sit down, write notes. To walk through and say, need a bathtub, need a mm -hmm. surround. You know, really have that, first of all, you have to have the list so you can stare at it. Because go into the room, I always tell people, walk into the room, write the list, Walk away from the area you want to work on. Sit down at a coffee table. Sit down with either your significant other, your dog, whatever it may be, and uh, start uh, writing down all the different stuff you do. Making a list of what you guys would like to see. Secondly, and obviously I deal with this just like everybody else out there, is budget. At the end of the day, there's a lot of things that I would like, but you have to make sure it works into the framework of your budget. With going through a uh, bathroom, there's a number of different things uh, that you might want to have accomplished. Uh, let's say you have a tub, mine was a blue tub, had uh, the old tile, the ground was falling out, um, and that's obviously something that I want to see done. Um, so let's start there, that's usually the focal point of any bathroom. Uh, when, when focusing with that, it comes down once again to the planning, what would you like to see? Um, you can put in a normal tub, you can put in a vinyl surround, you can put in a ceramic surround. A lot of this is going to come down to budget. Um, outside of that, if you're going to be taking care of your tub, usually the floor is integrated with it. I know with ours, uh, the floor was shot and removed the tub. Did you have carpet in there? Yeah, it was bad. Uh, it's something that I don't want to revisit. Um, it had a funky smell to it. Too. Not, not for me. If you have carpet in the restroom, to, to everyone their own, it just wasn't, it wasn't for that us. Was good times. Yeah. So a lot of that, that integrates right within the same thing. When doing these projects, um, if you can actually sit down once again, start with a plan, if the more you do it one time, the more headache it's going to save you, the time it's going to save you, and the cost. Because if, we have, if you have to do your bathtub this month and then you're going to wait six months to do the floor, you're going to have that much more time, that much more cost involved with it. A lot of things you're going to end up doing twice. Right. And then, because if 
that's a perfect example with the bathtub. If you don't have the, you know, the floor finished, and let's say you leave the old floor in, your new tub, a lot of times is new stock tubs. Your tub obviously was from right. the 60s, 70s. The new tubs don't match up perfectly. A lot of these older sort of 60s, 70s, they didn't have that straight front. They had that curve, yeah, and then it comes the over, does a curve out. Yep. So now, tubs today, you can't still get one similar, but you'll never be able to match that same configuration. So you're gonna lay down your old floor, and you got this gap. So now, you do wait six months, Water's important, but if you can't afford to do the floor at the time, just plan on, goes down to the planning, planning, what are you going to do with the floor during that in the next six months to keep moisture from getting between the tub and where your old floor was. So always keep that, you'd like to, obviously in a perfect world, be able to do both the bathtub and the floor at the same time, but the budget may not allow it. So get a plan together, what, what's obviously, definitely what's the first thing that has to go, maybe you have that tub or surround that separated. It has to be, it has to be taken care of. That has to go. So what's the next thing? Well, then for doing the bathtub, we got to think about the floor. Yep. Because like there. Then from there, uh, we talk about ceramic on the surround. How much of this ceramic is covering the rest of the walls? It, like yeah, yours. I was going four feet up the wall. And then mm -hmm. kind of followed into the surround up and around. A lot, very, thing. very familiar design. We see very yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them. And so, okay, you don't necessarily have to do the walls right then. You'd like to because obviously you don't have no tile left. Because you're most likely, yeah, what I recommend to people, if you're on a tight budget, go with like a bathtub with like a matching three piece surround. Yes. I hear a lot of people say, hey, I want that one piece unit. The fact of the matter is, it most likely is not going to fit. The, most of these homes that have a one piece unit in them now uh, were put in during new construction. Yeah, it was built in with the home. Right, the framing was not even off the. If you don't believe us, put a tape measure on it and then measure your door. You know, it's probably <laughs> not going in. <laughs> so you're most likely your most common budget bathtub, if that's what your first priority is, is a bathtub with a three piece surround. So with that being the case, you're going to lose all that blue ceramic that is on your surround now. But now we're left with the rest of the walls being ceramic. So going back to planning, what are you going to do with the wall if you can't afford in your budget? You're going to have to think about, okay, I need to have a termination on this wall. And I'm going to get to this wall. I want it gone. That's part of my plan. Yeah, that's down the road, though. If you can't. Well, budget don't let it. But I have to talk about what do we have to do to cap this wall off with either trim or something. Some moisture, obviously, doesn't get there. It looks halfway presentable. You know, and, and I'd say halfway presentable. I've seen people really dial it up, and it looks really nice like it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah you can make so, it. What else we got, one? Um, going from there, you can get into you're going to get into your toilet. Do you want to upgrade your toilet? Um, a lot of the newer toilets you can get now, obviously, are going to be more economical as far as uh, uh, conservation of water and things yep. along those lines. Uh, if you have a new vanity, if you're doing the floor, most of the time, depending on how the floor was installed, the vanity has to be pulled anyway. So at that point, are you going to put the old vanity back in, or are you going to go ahead once again with planning? Since you already have it out, it's going to save you a step down the road just to put a new vanity in. A um, lot of sizes, a lot of styles, how is your plumbing ran for it. There's a lot of things that you have to put into consideration when choosing out, choosing your new. Uh, for your perfect example, we just did an install for a customer and uh, they had the old flooring that the uh, flooring company had just butted up to their existing vanity. They went and picked out all these new vanities That's right. and they were on the beautiful vanities, but they were on pedestal legs and they had open bottoms, so there was no place for them to terminate where the old floor was. Um, so you put the new one in and you're looking at plywood underneath of their brand new gorgeous vanities. These are just little things you have to look into with making these plans. Um, outside of that, when it comes to picking these products, let's say you've got a plan in place, you have a budget you want to work with, it comes down to picking these products. Um, a lot with this, there's a lot of products on the market. A lot of products on the market. Do research. A lot of these products that you're going to be purchasing have already been purchased by other homeowners. Um, a quick way for you to see if it not only fits your budget and is economical and also convenient for you is to check on a lot of these sites. A lot of the box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, they all have reviews of the different products that have been, uh, that have been purchased. A lot of these homeowners have already gone through the headache of knowing what works and what doesn't. big thing is to go on there. You might, have, you might find a shower faucet. It costs you 80 bucks and you think that's awesome. It fits my budget, but it also... Um, performs like a $20 faucet. And this can help save some headaches along those lines. Uh, you just don't want to kick yourself at the end of the day picking something that um, fits your budget but also is not going to be convenient for you using with this. And then the ratings online. Yes. Uh, I, we do that all the time. My wife got me 
really involved with that. You know, you go to Google and just look up a general search, and uh, you'll get uh, you know other sites pop up like Bing, Next Tag, all these. You can uh, or Amazon, and uh, you click on them, and they show you you know a hundred different things, and they have the ratings. You click on them, I see the reviews from other customers, and those are. I mean, I've almost pulled some mistakes there. I almost said a bad word there, but right. Uh, <laughs> and this is no different than something we would do for a lot of our customers. Uh, a lot of these products that we use, obviously, we only have one or two bathrooms in our home, so it's not something we've installed in our home every other day. So a lot of these products that we look into for our own clients is we do research ourselves. This is nothing different than what we do ourselves to make sure that we're given the best product that we possibly can to fit the budget of our clients. Uh, so this is something that's very simple that you can do yourself. Uh, they could end up sudden I hope save you some headaches down the road. And even if we are going to do the work for you, hire us to do the work, we're going to put, we're going to do a lot of the footwork for you. We're yes. going to come in, we're going to put your plan together on how we think it should be attacked. We're going to tell you what we think needs to be done right away. We're never going to say, oh, this all has to be tore out. Right. Not typically. We're going to say, look, the first thing we have to do is do a bathtub and we'll price that out separately. Oh, by the way, here's the walls. This is how much it's going to be. But we do the same thing as far as looking at products go. Mm -hmm. We may even go as far as to invite one of the representatives from either Lowe's or even Home Depot to meet yes. us on site, depending on the size of the project, for they can, a rep from them can look at everything. They're going to put your materials together. You know, you're going to tell them, hey, I want to spend X amount of hours. They're going to try to put some, they're going to work with you the best they can and then I'll put a budget together, but we're gonna ask you then to go back and sort. You're still gonna to have to pick up your product. So whether you're hiring us or you're gonna do it yourself, look up the products and make sure you're happy with the finish, the style, the reviews look good. You don't want a piece of crap in there. Right. Uh, you know, check it out, you know? So that, that's definitely something that we even do is doing a lot of this, exactly what we're telling you to do. Yeah, no, no, that's what we do day to day. Obviously, we've already got the plan. We've got the plan in place. Uh, we have an idea of what we're looking for. We've worked on our budget, so we know what we have to get, uh, what we'd like to see our uh, cost fall into the constraints, and we've looked up the products we want, we've looked up the ratings, and we're happy with what we found. Next comes down to your schedule. This is a big thing we have to deal with every day. Yeah, all the time. And the, the, I think one of the hardest things for us um, and I think what's always separated us from other companies, and not all companies, but many of them, is that we're able to talk to a customer and they're saying, okay, I'm ready to go through with this bathroom. Yes. All the anxiety is put away. You guys sound like you know what you're doing. Okay. So we tell them what they're like, when can you start? When is it going to be finished? Okay, this is something that we've always been very good at. We'll tell you a start date and a finish date. And most of the times, we're actually shooting to be done before we actually said we're going to be done. Uh, so it's really important the, uh, you know, you think about, you know, the, 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 the scheduling is really important because the last thing you want is your house tore up for the last six months and if you do hire a contractor, you want to make sure that if they say they're starting here, they're already done at this time and maybe you might even want to put the contract if it's not. There are a lot of commercial yeah, government projects. We yeah. have penalties if we're not done by the 15th of this month, exactly. that's amount per day. Right, because at the end of the day, most people that we work for, they have an eight to five job just like we do. And you schedule your time frames around what this contractor is telling you, hey, I'm gonna be done in four days. You might take your vacation time for those four days. If it's gonna bleed over into a fifth and sixth day, all of a sudden you're caught in a pickle. What are you gonna do? You can't take more time off of work, your kids are in school, you can't have somebody come over and babysit, because they have eight to five jobs too. So that ends up being a real headache when it comes down to that. So scheduling is very, very important. It's also important for the homeowner if you're doing this yourself. Explain yeah. how that works. Why would a homeowner want to also, let's say they're doing the work, you're doing the work yourself. Why, why do we always stress people your schedule is so important, even though you're doing it yourself? Well, when scheduling it yourself, um, obviously this is something that you're gonna be tackling yourself. Um, along those lines, you want to make sure that you don't have a project that you leave open ended. If you don't actually have a schedule that you set in your mind, uh, first and foremost, we've all had those little projects where we start, we have all the ambition, we're going to light the world on fire, and then as we get halfway through this project, we run into a little snag, oh, I can just do that next week. The, the longer that you let these projects linger, uh, obviously the longer the project's going to be going on, the less chance you have of things actually being accomplished. Uh, your homes will be torn apart and the less ambition you can have. And that's the last thing I always hate. When I get done with work, I want to go home. I don't want to see this project that I've been working on for the last four 
months still staring at me. I want it done. I want to enjoy all yeah. my hard work. Something that you were excited about seeing done, you have this new tub, you have this new floor, all of a sudden now you just wish the thing would just go away. You just want that part of your house bombed. And then even better is I don't ever have this problem, Glenn, but uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe you start a, a project and then you have, to, let's say, the bathroom, which is my wife's more important areas along with the kitchen. Let's say I start in the bathroom and I decide that I have better things to do than to finish the floor, and every day in the middle of the night that she has to come in there, she has to step. I have no, no ideas about this, I'm just throwing an idea. And then she has to continue to walk on this floor that has like rough plywood or maybe some nails sticking up here and there, because I always wear my boots now because I'm yeah. working it. And I'm, that's my construction zone. Right. You know, so I'm already prepared. But she's not. She's going to get a middle of the night, something around, you know, bump her toe. I can't get you know, you yell that. Yeah, so anyways, you want to make sure you get your project done in a timely fashion. Um, and on those same notes, I backtrack just a little bit. One of the biggest things, not only with budget, but also with scheduling, with any project that you're getting into that's a little larger, as far as your bath and kitchen, um, there's going to be things that come up sometimes that are unforeseen. Let's say you're going to be changing your floor out. You start to tear out your tub, you get your floor tore out, and you find out you, that all the decking underneath has been rotting because you have an older floor, an older tub that's been leaking. One of the big things that with your budget and with scheduling is make sure you have a little bit of flexibility. Um, there's going to be things that you just can't see. You don't have x-ray vision, um, so you got to make sure that you keep that in mind. Things are going to pop up that are unforeseen. Uh, it happens to us all the time. Right. Uh, the biggest thing is just trying to make sure that you're on top of that. And you leave a little bit of, little bit of flexibility in case that's going to be happening. And another thing that if you're hiring a contractor that, um, you know, this is also going to happen to him. Right? Like, you know, we're this magic wand and a wizard out here and all oh, it goes perfect for us. No, we have the same headaches. Um, but when that happens, there may be incurred costs. Yes. One thing I tell a contractor, like if I hire an electrician, we've talked about that in the past, but we tell our customers is if we run into a problem and if I hire a contractor, I'll tell them, I need to know how much additional, what exactly happened? What additional is this gonna cost me before you do any work? Because at the end of the day, it's your money. You don't want to, you know, you get the final bill, oh, an extra grand, what the hell? Yeah. You know, you don't even know, oh, well, well, we had planted this, the pie, blah, blah, blah. How do you know, I mean, it goes on that whole keeping honest, people honest to talk about. I wanted to see what the heck you were talking about, yeah. you know? Uh, this, because a lot of these costs are getting expensive fast, so I'm not saying that problems aren't going to arise, because we've ran into them. It happens. But make sure that if it is going to be incurred costs that are going to cost you more money, that you are able to see what exactly. It makes you understand why you're paying what you're paying for. The only dumb question is one that you don't ask. And another thing too, as I tell people, is always question, did we think about this before we found it? You know, was there something, you know, a lot of times these problems are gonna, for, are gonna throw their head out there. You never knew that this was a possible a problem, okay? but. You know, with like, uh, let's say you're doing a roof and you walk on a roof and you feel it's weak as heck. As a contractor, what I'm going to do is say, hey, look, it looks like we got a lot of wood replacement under here. I'm going to budget for X amount of sheets. But if it's going to be more than so many square feet, it's going to be this much more. We'll show you when we get there. Um, but let's say you have a contractor that says, yeah, I'm going to put all this roof on. We're turning everything up, putting the shingles on. And that goes back to my nightmare story with my own roof. But right, that's a whole right. other story. But then by the time he opens it, then he replaces all this wood. At the end, he ends up, this budget you're going to do for 5000 Maybe this was one of the guys with the lowest bid you went with. Right. Um, he gives you a bill for eight or 9000 You're like, what the heck? And you're like, oh, well, I had to replace all that decking. What what decking? You never had that in your bed. Well, we could just put new shingles on rotted wood. Well, I, I, I can appreciate that. <laughs> I can appreciate 110%. But I'd like to have seen this wood you spoke of. I'd like to know how many square feet you put down. I'd like to analyze it myself. Maybe I wanted you to take this wood further. Maybe I didn't want you to look at it. Maybe I wanted you to tear all of it up. I would have paid extra for that. Right. Because I didn't, sure as heck, didn't want to spend nine grand and leave this raw extra wood that's kind of, you know, that's not that maybe I wanted it all. I'd rather spend that extra thousand now. Even though it's costing me more now, I didn't want to spend nine thousand and it was only costing me five, then this thing's going to, instead of being a 30 year single and it ends up only lasting 15 because you didn't get the rest of the wood up. I'd rather have it done, spend that extra thousand right now and it lasts me 30 years instead of. 15. So make sure that I always question sometimes, not always, I do question if they do try to charge me more money, if a contractor does, I'm going to say, well, didn't we foresee any of this? 
I mean, you never talked to me about this at all. Right. You never told me about the problems that could have happened. Maybe I'd like to have needed to know this so I could have budgeted it for it. So right. that I say, I can talk to my significant other and say, hey, just say no, this shit, if everything goes good, it's two grand. But you can run into a headache and say yeah. it could go up. And a lot of this can be uh, can be avoided with planning. Um, within our previous uh, segment that we did before this, Nick did a great job explaining how to find a contractor, the different researches you can do to take care of this. Obviously, if you had a contractor, if a person's had a contractor where this circumstances happened, told you five grand, you end up with eight grand because there's extras they didn't tell you about, more than likely there's probably complaints floating out there about that company. Right. Um, so that's a lot of when it comes back to planning. Make sure you're checking out with the Better Business Bureau, Angie's List, the different rating companies you can find online. It takes five minutes, but it can save you a lot of headaches. Because I think that I think that between planning and budgeting, you're going and budgeting is going to go with you checking out your products. That's when you're going to really determine whether or not you're going to try to do this job yourself, or if you feel this is a job that either one you don't understand how to do, or two don't have the time to do, or a combination of the two. You know, you just might you might have all the know-how in the world, but don't have. Dude, I work 12 hours a day. I get time for this. I, I got little ones running around. I got a wife, you know, oh, I'm going to take a shower when I get home, you know, whatever. Uh, you're going to determine whether or not, so you're going to, because we've been focused a lot on if you're doing this project yourself, but during the planning and budgeting stage, you're really going to think to yourself, do I have to hire a contractor? If you do, go check out some of our other shows and you're going to see what we're going to recommend. And we're not going to get into that. That's a whole other yeah. segment about how to hire a contractor or try to get the best contractor for the job you're doing. And obviously here at 80 Plus, we're never going to discourage you from tackling the projects yourself. Um, obviously we tackle projects every day, but if you do want a hand with that, if this is something that you just don't have the time for, um, you'd like to have some ideas, at the end of the day, we want you to be happy with the project. But we've seen a lot of bathrooms, we've done a lot of things. Um, we might be able to throw some ideas your way to help maybe just get the thought process rolling for you. Please feel free to give us a call. Yeah. Uh, phone number is 419-478-1542. You can get a hold of me or Nick uh, when Nick actually happens to be in the office. Um, and we'd be more than happy to go ahead and set you up with a free estimate, give you some ideas. At the end of the day, we want to make sure you're happy with what you pick. But with all the different products we've tackled, obviously there's ideas that we can give you. Maybe get the thought process rolling, get you going in the right direction. And make sure, go to our website, ToledoHandyMan.com. A lot of before and after photos, a lot of tips on how to do these little projects to make your life a little easier. Visit ToledoHandyMan.com. Can't, can't miss it. Easy name to remember. ToledoHandyMan.com. ToledoHandyMan.com. <laughs> I'm Nick with A-plus building maintenance. Your Toledo Handyman. This was Glenn Carpenter. Keep up the good work. <laughs>